Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning into this community briefing on COVID-19. Joining me again this afternoon is interpreter Margie Propp, and thank you so much, Margie, for providing your services to our community. We encourage everyone to visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, where you will find a dashboard with the latest COVID-19 data and information. We update that dashboard at about 3 p.m. daily. At this website, you will also find our COVID-19 risk dial, a color-coded tool that gives our residents an indication of the level of risk of spread of COVID-19 here in Lincoln and Lancaster County. We update this risk dial every Friday, and last week we landed in the mid-orange range, indicating a high risk of the virus. This week, we have seen our local situation stabilize somewhat, and in light of slight improvement in some of the indicators, the dial is moving to a lower position in the orange range. And while we are pleased to be moving in the right direction, we all need to acknowledge that we remain in the high risk category. All of us are at risk of contracting the virus anytime we are out in public with others. We lost our 15th community member this week to COVID-19, and we again extend our condolences to his loved ones. The best way we can honor those whom we've lost and the best way we can take care of those still with us is to practice proven preventative measures faithfully. Let's demonstrate our commitment to protecting our friends, our family, and our neighbors by faithfully wearing masks, washing our hands, and staying at least six feet apart from others. While the novel coronavirus is unpredictable, we can count on these common sense steps to keep the virus from spreading and impacting more lives. Moving on to today's situational update, an additional 29 individuals in Lincoln and Lancaster County have tested positive for COVID-19. The total number of lab-confirmed cases now stands at 3,021. 
on a more positive note, our total recoveries identified to date are up from 1,248 to 1,279. Health Director Pat Lopez is here with a look at the main indicators that determine the position of the risk dial. And at this point, I'll turn it over to her. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it has been nearly two weeks now since our local directed health measure was updated to include the face covering requirement. We implemented that measure to help slow the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Most people are doing a great job in wearing face coverings and many businesses had already implemented a policy. Thank you to all of those in the community for supporting the measure and doing your part to help protect public's health. Last weekend, we did order the closure of two downtown bars for crowd continued violation of the directed health measure. We saw overcrowding, seating capacity crowding, patrons standing shoulder to shoulder in groups of more than eight, and many people were not wearing face coverings. Again, the goal of the directed health measure is to slow the spread of the virus so that bars, restaurants, and other businesses can stay open. We need all the businesses to take responsibility and do their part to protect the community. And we know the need those who choose to go out to also be responsible and take the simple steps to protect themselves and others. As we do every Friday, we will go over the five primary indicators that we use to determine the position on the dial. Then our department's lead epidemiologist, Raju Karkapaludi, will give a more detailed explanation of those indicators. The first key factor is the number of COVID-19 cases. We also look at the trend and at the demographics. When looking at the seven-day rolling average over the past three weeks, we can clearly see an upward trend from the low 30s at the beginning of July to around 50 last week. With an average of about 46 new cases per day this week, the trend may be starting to flatten out. When looking at the weekly number of cases, we have been seeing an upward trend from 85 cases the week ending June 27 up to 362 cases this past week ending July 25th. So far this week, we are at 241 cases. With more lab reports expected yet today and tomorrow, we might anticipate a count of around 300 this week. That would be a slight decline from the previous two weeks of 331 and 362 cases. A second factor is the positivity rate, the percentage of tests that are positive. The weekly positivity rate has been on the rise from an average of 4.8% in June to an average of 7.3% in July, an increase of about 52%. These weekly numbers give us a good look at potential trends. The cumulative numbers provide an overall picture of the situation, and that rate remains at 6.8% today. Another key factor is Lincoln's testing capacity and availability. And at this time, uh, as well as the time it takes to receive our test results. Unlike many locations in the country, testing capacity and availability is not an issue here. Testing has increased from about 2,500 a week in June to about 3,700 per week in July. We saw a high of more than 5,000 tests completed this week ending Saturday, July 18. Since the beginning of the pandemic, more than 44,000 individuals in our community have now been tested for COVID-19. Again, this is an unduplicated number. Each person is counted as one test, even if they have been tested multiple times. The turnaround time to receive test results has fluctuated from one week to week, depending on regional and national demands for testing. This is an area over which we have no control. Delays in leaving, receiving these lab results does impact our ability to follow up with people who are positive. Delays in the results also delays, puts off our start of contact tracing, 
which is so important in identifying clusters and stopping outbreaks and providing education to those who are positive. The end of last week, about 75% of the testing results were received within two to three days. We would like to see this get back down to two days or less for more timely contact tracing. Bryan Health and CHI Health St. Elizabeth both have capacity to do more testing at their drive through testing sites. To get started, you call or fill out a free online risk assessment at chihealth.com, bryanhealth.com to make your appointment. Test Nebraska has expanded testing to six days a week in our community, Monday through Saturday, and they are moving to a new location. With Lincoln Public Schools resuming classes, um, they are moving from the North Star parking lot to the north side of Gateway Mall, near the previous site of Yonkers. Um, you'll see a trailer parked out there and tents um, in the parking area. And this is um, the new location will start tomorrow and it will continue to be a drive through testing site. So just visit testnebraska.com to fill out an online assessment and schedule an appointment. A fourth factor we consider is the capacity and ability of the health department to conduct investigations and contact tracing. The health department currently has more than sufficient capacity and we have been able to keep pace with demand. Nursing staff still initiates contact tracing and attempts to reach out to close contacts of positive cases within 24 hours of receiving the lab result. However, as we mentioned, we have experienced times when there have been delays in getting lab testing results and that does delay the start of contact tracing. The fifth key factor is the capacity of our hospitals and the strength of our entire healthcare system. To determine this, we look at the total number of patients hospitalized, the number that are COVID-19 positive, and the availability of ICU beds. Lincoln's hospitals have remained healthy. The percentage of available ICU beds is about 55%, and the percentage of available ven ventilators is nearly 90%. The number of COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals today is 19, with 12 of those being from Lancaster County. In reviewing information and measures from these five key factors, you can see that most of our indicators have stayed flat or slightly improved. I want to echo the mayor in emphasizing that while the dial has moved, we are still in orange and the risk of spread remains high. To keep moving in the right direction, we all need to remain vigilant in our efforts to maintain six foot of distance from others, wear face coverings, and wash our hands regularly. That will allow us to continue to progress in the right direction. At this time, I'll turn this over to Raju for a closer look at our indicators on the dial. Uh, th uh, thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as Di Dr. Uh, sorry, Director Lopez mentioned, since its inception in May, the Health Department has used five primary measures that can be described using current data to communicate the risk to the public, positivity rate, cases, testing, contact tracing, and healthcare system capacity. These measures are commonly cited by numerous reputable public health agencies and research organizations as important public health indicators for COVID-19. Not surprisingly, measures and metrics have evolved and multiple iterations of similar metrics have been offered by different organizations. In addition, some measures thought to be very important early on, such as availability of ventilators, have become less important as best practices for medical care given to COVID-19 patients has changed. There is little doubt that many other changes in measures and metrics will occur 
as we continue to fight this global pandemic. The Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department has continuously monitored this evolution of measures and metrics and those for which data is available locally and which can be practically applied to Lincoln and Lancaster County. We have modeled the metrics used for COVID-19 risk dial from resources and recommendations from Johns Hopkins, Bloomberg School of Public Health and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or CDC. Now look, let's look at more detail, in more detail with each of these prime, five primary measures and how they relate to the position of Lincoln Lancaster County's COVID risk dial. The positivity rate for tests conducted the last three weeks is the key metric, which along with the trend in positivity rate. A common positivity rate used to reflect low risk of spread is 5% or less. And additional data from other states and communities has also shown that locations with positivity rates greater than 15% have had extensive community spread of COVID-19 and are clearly the hardest hit with high rates of illness, hospitalizations, and high number of deaths. In using these parameters, we evaluate the latest three-week average of positivity rate. Here is a color-coded table that we use each week. For example, the average rate for last three weeks in June was 4.4% which is below 5% and in green. However, for the last three weeks of July, the average is 7.3%, which is in yellow. New cases. As we look at the average number of new cases per day per 1,000 people in Lancaster County and the trend over the past three weeks, one of the measures used by Johns Hopkins University is the new confirmed cases per 1,000 people. For their purposes, Johns Hopkins chose to use a scale with seven cutoffs ranging from 0 0.0 to 0 0.50 cases per 1,000 population, which is on the left column. We considered Johns Hopkins scale and applied it to COVID risk dial. This is the middle column. We also took the seven-day rolling average of cases per day to assess risk. This would be reflected in the column on the right. In both categories, we have mainly been in yellow or very close to orange. Testing. Testing availability is a metric based on, its, on our local test sites that are at capacity. Currently, multiple test sites offer testing six days per week and have additional capacity. Early in the pandemic, testing was limited, but for the past two months, we have been in green, as would be reflected in the, law, in the left column, sorry, in the next uh, page. Data is also collected on the time it takes for the health department to receive the test results from the date the sample was collected. This is commonly referred to as turnaround time. Our goal is to have test results reported within 48 hours. When the turnaround time exceeds 48 hours, that increases the risk that someone who is positive may expose others and to those close contacts may develop COVID-19 before we can contact them. Based on an average of four days or less, the currently we would be in orange category as would be reflected in the column. Contact tracing and cluster identification. The length of time it, make, it takes to make the first contact with the original case and those with whom we had close contact is key to containing outbreaks. In addition, the percentage of cases that are identified to be connected to other cases is a measure of community spread. Our epidemiology team reviews all case investigations 
to identify connections and potential clusters. The benchmark is to make initial contact with a case within 24 to 48 hours. Also, if the cases are connected, then the source of the spread of COVID-19 is known, and it is easier to contain the it is easier to contain the pandemic. Right now, we are in orange category for finding fewer connected cases. As I mentioned, this is a reflection of community spread being more established in the community. The fifth, healthcare system capacity. This includes ICU bed availability and beds used by COVID-19 patients. This information is reported to the health department by local hospital systems. In Lincoln, we have yet to experience a significant shortage of hospital beds, ICU beds, or ventilators. However, this does not mean that COVID-19 does, COVID does not place a stress in our healthcare system. After considering various measures of health care system capacity, we have followed the lead of Douglas County Health Department and established a simple measure for the number of local hospitals, sorry, number of beds in the local hospitals for use in COVID-19 patients. In addition, we have chosen to use a percentage of ICU beds available measure. Typically, in Lincoln, we had over 50% of ICU beds available throughout the pandemic. These metrics were developed from reputable public health sources and input from our Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department team, which includes staff that have decades of experience in epidemiology, outbreak investigations, and biostatistics. Herein is an example from this week where each metric from all prime five primary measures were plotted on the gradient color-coded map to show averages of all the metrics ratings. You will see towards the bottom left, testing availability and ICU bed availability are close to green. In the middle, the point represents the weekly positivity rate and where it was rated this week and the three points towards the upper right side of the map include measures of new cases, case rate per thousand population, community spread, and testing turnaround time. The blue square outlined in the red is the result of averaging all metrics together or where the dial is located for this week. If our health department only looked at just one measure, we would be at a variety of places on the map. Therefore, the health department uses multiple measures and considers any unique situations for Lancaster County each week. All these measures are collectively considered in recommending the location of dial each week. We believe this dial provides the more robust description of a local risk to the public. As our knowledge of this pandemic grows, revisions may be made to these metrics. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raju and Director Lopez. These two health professionals are part of a larger Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department team that works every day to fulfill its mission to protect and promote the public's health. During the pandemic, our health department continues to play a fundamental and complex role as the front line for delivery of public health services. Their efforts are guided by constant evaluation of data, and since the beginning of the pandemic, we have shared a great deal of data with the public, not just at these briefings, but also at our covid19.lincoln.ne.gov website. Our health department was one of the first in the nation to create a tool like our local COVID-19 risk dial. Throughout the pandemic, and again today, We've outlined the multiple measures, data, and local conditions used to determine the position of the dial each week. We believe the risk dial provides the most robust description of local risk of the spread of COVID-19 for our community. And yes, you can find other models on the internet. Many of those isolate just a few indicators and fall short of looking at trends. 
You can also find many different opinions in our community on where the risk dial should be and what measures the city should implement. Our health department has taken great care to look at the big picture, all the available data, trends, and any unique local conditions. These health professionals do an excellent job, but they need your help. Their database recommendations won't have any effect on the virus unless we faithfully follow them. This is a moment when every single one of us can be a hero by wearing masks, washing our hands, and watching our distance, keeping six feet from others. Thank you to the growing number of he hometown heroes in Lincoln and Lancaster County who are helping to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And to end the week on a positive note, we want to share with you a new national ranking released today by Smart Asset, a personal finance technology company. Smart Asset analyzed the 150 largest U.S. cities to find the best ones for young professionals, and Lincoln was ranked number three. Smart Asset looked at nine metrics, including the unemployment rate, the median earnings, and the cost of living. It's important for the future of our community that we continue to be a great place to live, work, and play for all ages. And finally today, I want to wish a happy birthday to the man in the video control room, often the man behind this very camera, who is making sure this briefing is on air. Jamie Wentz serves as operations manager for LNK TV, and his talents and expertise make it possible for all of you to tune in. I want to thank Jamie and his crew for the hard work over the past few months to help us provide important public health information to our community. Happy birthday, Jamie. And with that, we'll turn it over to Q&A. Any questions from the media, from the media today? today? This is Brent from Channel 8. I have a question for Director Lopez. All right, she'll be right here. Hi, Brant. Hi, Director Lopez. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, today Douglas County announced they will not be moving forward with a mask mandate. Uh, and the Attorney General's office said that's uh, basically due to state law, but that there's an exception to state law that essentially allows our mask mandate here in Lancaster County. Can you explain what that exception is? Well, I think, uh, you know, I can't give you all the legal description. I can give you the statute, but to basic, to explain it simply, you know, our city and county health department was formed before the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services. Um, so we've been in existence for a long time. And in the statutes, we are granted a specific exemption uh, for what we do in Lincoln. And we can get you more legal information on that, Brent. I do have a follow-up I think would probably be for the mayor. Sure. Hi, Brent. Hi, Mayor. Uh, so the governor has said that he was going to look into the legality of the mask mandate. Um, following this news today from the attorney general's office, uh, have you had any discussion with the governor about that or... Um, I have not. We haven't spoken today. Today. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi. This is Nick from the Journal Star. Hi, Nick. Um, I have a question for Director Lopez. All Hi, Nick. Hi, how are you? Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering how much uh, the department was involved in setting up the plans for the Beach Boys concert on um, this weekend. And I'm curious if you're monitoring that closely to see how outdoor and indoor events are going to work uh, in the future. Great question, Nick. Uh, yes, we have been um, directly involved in all the planning of the process um, for the Beach Boy concert outdoors and we will be monitoring it to see how well it went just like we monitored the graduation events at the Pinnacle Arena last weekend. I think right now we've approved 44 events in our community that are over 500 um, different areas that we've been looking at.
Mm -hmm. And just a quick follow up, have those events that you've been monitoring so far, like the graduation, has that given you hope that, that you can do more of this in the future? Absolutely. Uh, and it's great working, you know, our businesses on the whole in our community are really working hard to make things work and protect their employees, but also protect this, the public and, and control the spread of the virus so that they can continue to operate. So we have great hope that moving forward we'll be able to continue to, to adjust and the businesses have been great at adapting to what's happening in the current environment and what we have to do um, maybe at that specific time to ensure the safety of the public and their staff. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to follow, to follow up on that it, that Director Lopez addressed, um, we are so grateful to all of the organizations like LPS who are working with the health department to try and bring together uh, people for events and major milestones like the high school graduation. And it's so important to recognize that as much work and planning goes into those events, it still is up to the actions of each and every one of us in our community to keep them safe. I was at the Pinnacle Bank Arena for graduation uh, because my daughter just graduated from Lincoln High. And it was amazing to see the teams of people from LPS and the arena who were safely handing diplomas, avoiding shaking hands, wiping down the handrails of the steps as, as each individual descended the stage. And then also I couldn't help noticing someone who in her excitement so um, ju with jubilant, uh, jubilantly hugged multiple people as they walked down the aisle to go back to their seats, undoing some of the safety precautions that others had worked so hard to put in place. So again, each of us has a role to play. And it's hard for those of us who love to give hugs, but this is a time to express ourselves through words um, and to honor and show our love for others by keeping distance and being mindful of these incredibly important safety precautions. Other questions? All right, well, thank you all for joining us today, and thank you for being among the growing number of heroes who are wearing masks, washing their hands, and keeping their distance from each other in order to protect our friends, our family, and our neighbors from the spread of COVID-19. You are the reason that we will get through this together. Thank you.